or dear students or today we'll see what do we mean by robot or control system now uh, this will be on the same lines like we have studied open loop or control system and closed loop control system based on those lines only we'll be having a robot control system now in that we'll be studying two control systems they will be named as non servo control system and servo control system so based on these names you can have robots like non servo robots and servo control robot. then we will go with the topic so today's topic will be robot control systems and in that as i have told you earlier we'll be having two types one is called as non servo control and the other one is called as servo control so when you say non servo control so this it will be a open loop system it is a open loop system so open loop system means it will not have any feedback it will not have any feedback okay now non servo robots are the simple robots they are the simplest form of robot and they are often referred as limited sequence robot which can have a limited sequence of action it can also be uh, referred as pick and place robot which can pick a thing from one point and place it on another point it can also be uh, referred as fixed stop robots the non servo robot is a open loop system and in an open loop system there is no feedback mechanism that is there is no a uh, connection between output status and the input non servo robots move their arm in an open loop fashion between exact end positions on each axis okay so this is a, a robot which is a very simple robot which works on a non servo control and it has a limited sequence okay similarly if you go to see servo control then servo control on a contrary will be a closed loop system now here the servo control robot is a closed loop system that means there is a, a connection there is a, a connection between the output status and the input so the servo a control robot is a closed so closed loop system because it allows for feedback in a closed loop system the feedback signal the feedback which is given from output to input is sent to the servo amplifier which affect the output of the system so the output of the system is controlled by a comparing this feedback with the desired input okay so in that way you get a accuracy in this servo control mechanism and this servo control or robots are the product of this servo control mechanism then we'll go to see the block diagram of non servo control system now in this block diagram there is no feedback from output to input there is no feedback from output to input it is a simple straight system it is a open loop system now in this figure we show a non servo control system robot now at the beginning of the working at the beginning of the cycle okay the a controller which we have shown here this controller okay a controller which is a processor okay so this a controller will send a signal to the control valve so it will send a signal to this solenoid valve which is called as control valve so it is going to send a signal to this control valve now this a control valve is a part of this robot manipulator robot manipulator which will be having a arm wrist position here arm wrist the arm is going to move see this is the arm wrist this is going to move and what movement in what uh, what direction how much angle that will be decided by the uh, controller and then that controller is going to give an indication activate the control valve okay now this a uh, control valve whichever is here now that valve activates and the actuator which is there after that this actuator this actuator is going to start the arm movement so here the arm movement will start see this is your arm so this arm movement will start so it will start the movement of the arm the arm starts moving when the manipulator reaches the ends of some intermediate stop so when this arm reaches some specified point which we have already decided 
Okay, now this is the point where I want to reach. So when the arm reaches to this point, okay, when the arm reaches that point, it will touch a something called as micro switch or a limit switch. So here we have shown a limit switch. So this limit switch will be touched by that arm. Okay. So this actuator action will be connected with the limit switch. The limit switch will be the point, the position where the arm has reached. The limit switch end is the position sensing switch. Clear? Now that limit switch over here. Okay. Now this limit switch will send signal to the a controller. This will send signal to the a controller. Okay. This will send signal to the controller informing that the arm has reached the desired position. Then the controller what it will do because it has come to know now that the arm has reached the desired position. It will deactivate this valve. It will deactivate the solenoid valve. Okay. So the controller deactivates the control wall or the solenoid wall. The process is repeated until all the steps in the program have been completed. So this is a normal process where the limit switch is going to tell you the end point of the task and the solenoid wall if it is activated and it will give signal to the actuator, they will start the task. Okay, once the task is started and once the arm reaches, the moment of the arm reaches to a particular position, then the limit switch will be activated and once the limit switch gives a signal to the controller, the controller again will deactivate the valve, the valve will give the signal to the actuator and the moment of the arm will be stopped. Okay, this is a simple system, a straight system or open loop system which comes as non-servo control system and robots based on this system are called as non servo control robots okay now here we'll go to see the definition of non servo ro robots non servo robots are the simplest robots and are often referred to as limited sequence as i've told you earlier pick and place or fixed stop robots the non servo robot is an open loop system in an open loop system no feedback mechanism is used to compare program positions to actual positions so there is no feedback there is no status of the output given back to the input it is a straight moment once the arm reaches a certain position a position switch will give the signal to the controller the, the a controller will deactivate the task non servo robots are also limited in their movement and these limitations are usually in the form of mechanical stop this form of robot is excellent in repetitive tasks where a task which you have to always repeat in that form these robots are very good such as material transfer then if you go to see our characteristics of non-servo robots you can mention a few very important characteristics number one they are relatively inexpensive as compared to servo robots they are simple to understand and operate they are precise and reliable they are simple to maintain, maintenance is simple. They are, are capable of fairly high speeds of operation. They are small in size. They are limited to relatively simple programs. Then we'll go to see what do we mean by a servo control system. So a same type of robot, mon uh, robot manipulator is shown over here. So here you can see you are having a robot manipulator. Here you are having your servo wall, same like your solenoid wall, and that will give a signal to the actuator the actuator is going to make the arm position move so this is the arm so it will be start moving okay now that moment of the arm once it reaches to a position then it will give a position sensor is there which will give the signal which will give the signal to the feedback amplifier here you can see feedback amplifier so here feedback amplifier is nothing but a comparator here you are having a comparator okay now this comparator is having two inputs one is your input command okay input command that is the desired position where you want the arm to be and this is the feedback which has come from the output saying that where the arm exactly is now both the signals will be compared in this servo amplifier which is a comparator so we have shown here sine plus and minus. 
so both will be compared and the difference of them will be taken as error signal now that signal is going to control your servo valve and that servo valve is going to give signal to the actuator and then the actuator movement will rectify the exact arm wrist position okay so this is how your simple positional servo system is going to work so this figure shows a simple positional servo system where at suitable locations like joint or wrist etc position sensors are employed so everywhere wherever you want to go and touch wherever the movement want to end that point will be having a position sensor so the arm position when the arm is going to move from what position till what till what exact position it has to end its task at that position you will be having position sensors now position sensors are employed position sensors are used to give the feedback of the positional information to the comparator that is the servo amplifier okay now this position sensors are going to give the feedback to the position uh, that is the positional information to the comparator for precision and stable position reach velocity feedback can be provided by using a tacho generator in addition to the feedback position sensor so to this sensor you can also add an additional information of velocity of the and both this can make the working of servo control more accurate more optimized okay so in this way your servo control system is going to work and the robots which are based on this servo control that is a closed loop system are called as servo control robots then if you see the definition of servo robots the servo robot is a closed system because it allows for feedback in a closed loop system the feedback signal sent to the servo amplifier affects the output of the system the servo amplifier translates signals from the controller into the motor voltage and current signals servo amplifiers are used in motion control systems where the precise control of position or velocity is necessary in a sense servo mechanism is a type of control system that detects and corrects the errors so the arising of error in this type of control system as compared to the non servo because non servo is an open loop control system so as compared to that open loop control system this control system will minimize the errors now if you go to see our characteristics of servo control system robots those are servo robots then you can have number 1 relatively expensive to purchase operate and maintain use a sophisticated closed loop controller so they use a sophisticated closed loop controller they have a wide range of capabilities they can transfer objects from one point to another as well as long a uh, controlled a continuous path they respond to very sophisticated programming they use a manipulator arm that can be programmed to avoid obstructions within the work envelope okay so these are the uh, characteristics of servo robots thank you students